Okay, so hey guys, it's Quinston and today we're gonna talk about the strand sort. Now, this is a very interesting algorithm I came across and I thought I'd share it with you guys. Um, so the way this works is, let's say you have an input array. In this case, I have an input array, 58, 38, 4, 91, 62. And what I'm going to do in this case is, you create something called an input array, an output array, and a sublist. And then you merge the output array and the sublist array to give you another output array. What, I, what, what, what do I mean when I say that? So let's say you have this strand sort of 58. So what you basically do is, I'll just copy this and make an example over here. So this is your input array is equal to this. Um, so you create something called an output array, which is equal to empty. At, at the start, the output array is going to be empty. And then you have something called the sublist. Now the sublist is not connected. It's not uh, permanent. It's just a temporary um, you know, array you create to keep track of what you're doing. So what you do is you take the first element of the input array, pop it out. So you basically remove it from the input array and put it or push it into the sublist. Now, once you push it into the sublist, what you do is you basically check whether there are any elements in the input array that are greater than the last element of the sublist array. What do I mean when I say that? Let's take an example. So now 58 is the last, you know, the last element in the sublist, obviously, because it's the only element in the sublist. So the way I'm going to do this is sublist 58, check if 38 is greater than 58. No, it's not. Is 4 greater than 58? No, it's not. Is 91 greater than 58? Yes, it is. So what you basically do is you put 91 in here and you remove 91 from the input array. Now your sublist basically has these elements 58 and 91 and what you do is you merge the sublist with your output array. So in this case the output array is nothing and the sublist is has two elements. So merging them is very straightforward. You just say 58 and 91 and that's your merged elements and then you reset the sublist. So your output array now contains 58 and 91, which if you observe are sorted elements. Now you need to do the same process over and over again to basically get your correct answers. So let's take 38 in this case, 38. I take 38, put it in here, 38. Now is 38 um, greater than four? Yes, it is. So four doesn't, you know, four cannot be over here. Is 62 greater than 38? Yes, it is. So you put 62 over here. Uh, always remember you're checking the last element of the sublist, last element and the current element of the input array. That's it. So 62 can be removed from here. Now what you can do is we can merge sublist and output array. Now merging in this case is a little bit more complicated because um, obviously these elements are not, uh, you know, they, these elements are not empty. Sublist and output array are not empty as we discussed in the previous case. So the way you do this is merging. Um, so what does merging actually mean? So merging two lists two lists, merging two arrays or two lists basically means you need to create an ordered third list from the two lists you already have. So if you say you have one element, one array called let's say first and second, and then you say merge first comma second, what you need is a third list, which is an ordered list of the already existing elements of first and second. What does that mean? It basically means, let's say, I'll just call this like temp or, or merged list right and right now it is empty let's put this up there so for merging them you basically take the value let's say you take 38 you take the first value of the first first list and the second value and, and the first value of the second list and you basically check is 38 greater than 58 yeah uh, yes no no it's not so what you do is you increment the pointer of the first list and you write 38 over here so now the, the pointer in the first list, that is this one over here, is pointing to 62. Then you check, is 62 greater than 58? No, it's not. So you place 58 in here. And then you increment the pointer for the second list. Now the first list has a pointer at 62 and the second list has a pointer at 91. So what you do is you check, is 62 greater than 91? No, it's not. So you put 62 over here. and. So there is nothing to increment to. So it basically disqualifies this entire list. And then you only focus on this list over here. And then you add elements one by one. So there, there, there's only one element left, which is 91. So now your merge list is this one over here. And you take this merge list and just give the values to the output array. As you see in this line over here. Let's get, get to that later. So now 
your output array has these values, which if you see are sorted and your sublist is supposed to be empty. So now your sublist is empty and you repeat the same process over and over again. So let's say input array of four. So you take pop it out of this and you put it over here. You have four over here and then you, you have no other elements in the input array. So you basically merge this and this. So while you merge it, you it's very simple to merge this is four greater than 38. No, it's not. Just put four over here and you're done. Obviously, you'll also have to do the process of the merged array, merged array. And but this is how it's actually supposed to work. This is how the strand sort basically works. Now let's look at the code and, uh, you know, get a better understanding of how this basically works. So strand sort um, is a function that I'm calling over here. This is the array that I'm passing into the function and uh, whatever value that I'm going to get, whatever return value that I'm going to get from this function, I'm just going to like print it very straightforward. I just run it once to show you that it actually works. Um, yeah, I've run it a couple of times. See, it works. Okay. So, um, so let's let's check out the function over here. This is a strand sort of input array. The input array is basically the list that you're going to pass into it. I'm generating my output array over here, output array for accumulating results. I'm going to run the loop. This is the main loop that we saw, the main loop that, that you run while there are no elements, while there are elements inside of input array. If there are no elements in, inside of input array, then there is no need to run this loop. Uh, here, I'm basically taking or popping out the first value of the input array and putting it inside a, a renewed uh, sublist. So as you see, these brace brackets define that the sublist is empty. And then this basically means that there is one element in the, in the, in the sublist, which is basically the element that's popped from the input array. I know this one line signifies a lot of concepts in the array, but I just thought it would be shorter if I write it like this. Um, then I'm basically looping it over the uh, input array. So you're basically going through the input array one by one, finding elements that are greater than the last element of the sublist. I'll say that again, finding elements that are greater than the last element of the sublist, the last element. So while X is less than the length of the input array, check if the current value of the input array is greater than the sublist. If it is, remove that element and just put it on at the end of the sublist. So basically, if input array of X is greater than the last element of the sublist, this is just a Pythonic way, a very Python way of writing, hey, I want the last element of the sublist. Sublist of minus one, instead of writing length of sublist minus one, you can just write minus one directly. Python is awesome like that. So input array of X is greater than the sublist of minus one. Then you basically say sublist dot append or uh, input array dot pop of x. So basically you remove the element that you're checking if it's greater than from the input array and put it at the end of the sublist append. And then you basically increment x if this function doesn't get called to keep going through the loop. So output array is equal to merge of sublist comma output array. So merge is a function that we have written over here. So as you saw in the example, merge basically takes the first and second lists and basically co combines them into a merged array. So how does it do it? You basically define two pointers, a equal to zero and b equal to zero. While a is less than the length of the first, remember that if a goes over the length, then you basically have only one list to deal with. Then you can just pick out elements one by one and put them in there. So let's just go through this. If a is less than the length of the first and b is less than the length of the second, if first of a is less than the second of b, which is the first, so in this case, a equal to zero, b equal to zero. So first element, first element, if the first element is, you know, less than, then you basically add the first element to, to the list. And if the first element is greater than, then you add the second element. And if both are the same, if both the elements are the same, which happens rarely, you basically add both the elements to the list and uh, you increment the list. And then you increment both the pointers. So while A is less than the length of first, merged array dot append is first of A and A plus plus. So basically if this loop has finished, which basically means either uh, you run out of elements in the first list or you have run out of elements in the second list, then you basically say that, uh, you know, A of A is less than length of first, merged array append, first array, then you say A plus plus, A equal to A plus one, then you go over the entire list and append all of them. And if there are elements still left in the second list, you know, only one of these will be executed at, at a time. None of, not both of these can be physically, it's like impossible for these to be to be executed in one loop. So basically you, you run through the end of the list and you run through the, the second list and you basically return the merged array and then you're done. So that is your merged array over here. And then you put that in the output array and then you go through the loop again while the input array is still, the input array still has elements and then you're basically done.
So it's, it's, it's a very interesting algorithm, the way it works. It takes a lot of inspiration from the merge sort, I think. Um, and it doesn't have very good complexity. So I don't, I don't know what cases you would use this in because it's also very heavy on the, on, on the memory. Um, so yeah, it's very weird why people even use this. Uh, maybe people don't, I'm not sure. So thanks for watching guys. Uh, that's all for this video. Please like, share and subscribe if you enjoy this content. And um, you know, share this video with people who like the strand sort, whoever they are. Uh, so thanks for watching guys. I will see you in the next video.